Uh, Dan, I'm curious uh, as to the process that you would have for going through a specific Stargate script. First of all, was it different uh, or unique in any respects to any of the other content that you've worked on? But can you take me through the process of uh, what you would have to do to prepare and execute what was on the page? How many weeks in advance um, would you get the script? How would you prepare? What's the process that you would go through, if you don't mind, from beginning to end? Episodic. We'd have about a week and a half prep and an eight-day shoot. You get the script, you read the script, you start highlighting the script, all the stunts and all the actor action beats. And then there's an ND sequence where you have a bunch of Jaffa running around or something getting blown up. How many do you think we should uh, try and get for this? And and should we make it cool? Is it enough for them just to jump off an alpha box? We've seen Jaffa running and flying and blowing up before. Are they going to get bored if we just have them fall over or should we put them on wires? And how do you have the wire? Do we need to bring in a huge crane that costs uh, 50 grand or should we, are there big trees there? Maybe we can convince Martin Wood or Peter Delaware, let's have the action over by the trees and we can put pick points up in the trees and then we can have it come down to a uh, ratchet, which has a uh, thousand pounds per square inch of, of oxygen in, or, uh, in, in the machine that can propel people you know, through the air as quickly as humanly possible. You can yank them so hard their boots would fall off. And do we want to have them fall off camera onto a pad? Do we want to have Ray Douglas set up some flames up the rear end so it looks kind of cool as they're blasting away? So then we'll need fire retardant gel to put on their face. And yeah. so these are just conceptual things that you would go through during the um, uh, concept meeting, which be, would be the first meeting. So you, you then put together your uh, uh, preliminary stunt budget and then you got to be careful. Now, are they whining about money these days or are the ratings high? Should I go big or should I go small? Uh, if you go a little bit big, ask for 10, then maybe you can get away with eight stunt people. Yeah. And, and so then you do your preliminary budget. No one whines about the numbers. So then you figure, oh, great. So then you'll start thinking about hiring people. Uh, then you start sending the pictures of the people to the directors. What do you think of this? person uh, like we oh well, we've hired ronnie robinson too many times he's six foot four 235 he's great but we saw him last season i want to talk briefly about a ronnie robinson anecdote later as yes, i wrap up the original it question up. it's a peter deloise and uh, ronnie robinson uh, story and so now you do the concept meeting you discuss 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 then you have your specific stunt meeting where you go into details uh, about it, how are we going to make it look cool? How are we going to make it safe? Then you have the tech survey. So then you physically, uh, everyone gets on the happy bus and you go around to all the different locations and, and you discuss exactly what you're going to be doing. So the Stargate is going to be over there and, and people are going to be coming up over the hill. It'd be kind of cool to have a guy being shot and rolled down the hill. And, and you know, things might pop into your head that are uh, location uh, specific that you hadn't thought of before. And you run it past the director and they say, no, you're an idiot. Or they go, oh, God, that's kind of a cool idea. And that's the other thing, too. Uh, if, if, if directors are kind of uh, not very pleasant, you, you tend not to want to give ideas because they make you look like an idiot. But, but our guys like Martin Wood and Deloise, they were hilarious. And so they would encourage you even to give the stupidest ideas. And I can't always come up with a, little, with a lot of stupid ideas. <laughs> so now we've got the tech survey. We've got that scoped in. And then, so now we're, we're pretty much locked and then we start actually hiring the people. And, and then the people then uh, go for their wardrobe fittings and they go for their hair, hair haircuts and, 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 uh, and so on. And then we get the schedule and then the, we hire everybody and then the schedule changes 13,000 times. So the 10, 15, 30 people that you hire are now no longer available because they're going to work on the Will Smith iRobot thing, which is huge and it's uh, more yeah. money and it's cooler. And it's a, a 135 buyout for the actors to be on camera instead of a 110. You know, with buyouts, you they can use your image for years and not have to pay your residuals. Whereas in SAG, there's no buyout. So you 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 have you get residuals right away, but you don't get double your salary up front like we do here at UBCP. Uh, and, and so they love features because you make more money in features. So then you got to hire 10 more people. Then the wardrobe people are like, what? We fitted all these guys. You know, now we got to fit a bunch of other guys. What's going on? Not my fault. Oh, this guy's got a tattoo. We got to bring in someone else uh, three hours earlier to uh, get rid of the tattoo. And I'm going to complain to the PM that the stunts are 
are causing all these budget alerts. And then this guy's got bleached hair, so you know, Jaffa and uh, I remember uh, that had, specific actor with bleached hair. Yeah, they don't. They they don't have. They can't have it. So, but or they specifically want it. We had Glenn Ennis and uh, Michael. Um, can't think of Michael's name at the moment. They were huge blonde haired guys. Mm -hmm. They're six foot four. And then Glenn Ennis now, as an aside, was a Jaffa, and um, he doubled. Um, oh gosh, who's the biggest guy in Hollywood now? Who's Aquaman? He doubled him on. Oh, Jason Momoa. You know Jason. You know Jason. Yeah. But now Glenn, Glenn, and then Ken Kersinger, who is a. Uh, a stunt Jaffa commander, stunt actor, are going somewhere this weekend for a convention. You must have, maybe you're probably familiar with it because they played Jason uh, in a bunch of movies. So there, there's some convention somewhere in your great country where these two buddies of mine, both 6'4", 6'5", 270, are going uh, uh, for a convention. And Brad Lurie also, and because they played Jason. Mm -hmm. And Glenn did a little video on YouTube today where he's putting all this Jason masks in a suitcase Packing to go for his little little convention, uh, and then uh, and then you get all the new people, and and then you're about to shoot, and then as you're about to blow stuff up, they send you another script, and you start uh, you know prepping as you're on set, uh, and you, you repeat it all over again. But now it's overlapping because now you're shooting the one episode and prepping the next, and uh, uh, you know that that was the fun part. Now when the WB uh, stunt shows came. The stunt coordinator named JJ Mackerel came up with this miraculous idea of let's having a, a stunt coordinator and a dedicated fight choreographer and yep. a dedicated budget guy and a de de dedicated uh, uh, tech survey guy, and that cost a ton of money, but their their formula worked because so that that begot Superman and Legends and Arrow and Flash and back but back in my day, I was the idiot who did everything. Wow. And and so uh, and still do because I kind of like the and then then you throw in COVID, yeah. But then it's like the schedule changes and everyone's been tested, and and now you know we we got to get a whole bunch more and we got to get them tested. And when I was doing uh, animal control and we'd actually uh, done the fight choreography, we we did the previs previs when you shoot the video and you cut it and you you show it to the grown ups and get them to sign off on it. So we're all, <laughs> all dialed in. And then everybody went to Whistler to see the stunt person, uh, Marnie Yang's incredible movie there at the film festival. And they were partying and drinking and hugging. And then uh, they all got COVID. All got it. So now all my fighters have got COVID. And now I got to bring in five new people on Monday to work on Tuesday. So I bring them all in. And we're, we're doing the PCR test, which takes seven hours. They're all positive. So then I got to bring in seven more. And it's at night. And their call time's 5 a.m. the next morning. And so then I just bring in 10. I say, the, the people who don't test positive, you're working. And uh, yeah. so we got through, and we, we did a nice fight on another show called Animal Control and not not Stargate, but still uh, a, a funny show. And so so that that's another thing, the whole COVID thing. And then when we got to the end of another show that I was working on, we, we uh, Animal Control. So help me, Todd. And this other show called Under the Bridge. The story about a, 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 a southern South Asian 15 year old girl from Victoria. You know, Vancouver Island is Victoria. Mm -hmm. 15 years ago, she got beat up and drowned by by a bunch of 15 year old girls. And we we that 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 was uh, but we, we got to the end of that. And in the last month of that show, we didn't have to do COVID te test. No testing, no masks, no nothing. And it was it was uh, it was heaven. So, uh, so, and I was rambling, sort of the ramble. And, and the lead on that show, she's incredible. Her mother uh, was Lisa Marie Presley. So she died uh, four months ago. So we were on hiatus for a month. Uh, and I forget the lead's name. She's incredibly talented, but uh, that was under the bridge. Uh, you can knock it off. You're, you, I see you typing it in. You're going to get it. And she's done a bunch of stuff. And she's really, Riley really talented. Keough. That's it. Danielle That's Riley Keough. Wow. Riley Keough. Thanks for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. You can find the full live stream shows on our YouTube channel or visit dialthegate.com for the complete schedule. See you on the other side.